All right, what's going on, guys? We are in such a dry spell for Elden Ring content lately. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't want to get spoiled on absolutely anything in this game and want to go in 100% blind. You guys are having some pretty smooth sailing right now because we have absolutely nothing. Aside from the little tiny bits of lore that are dropping in the Fan Art Fridays, which, if you didn't catch the one yesterday, let me fill you in real quick. In yesterday's tweet, we learned more about Godric the Golden. And it reads, Born a weakling child, he coveted the strength of his kin. And I believe it was confirmed that he is one of the lords. So if you watched my lore video a few days ago, where I discussed that I didn't think he was one of the lords, because it seems like he's going to be one of the main tutorial bosses. And now we know why that is. He was kind of the run of the litter, and sought external means of power by taking the limbs of other living creatures. So while we didn't reach the right conclusion, the train of thought was correct. But speaking about lore, what I want to do in today's video is take your lore theories that you submitted in a question I asked a few days ago and break them down here in the video. Now before we get started, I did a stream a few days ago where I discussed with you guys how we can evolve the channel. And the aim for this was to become an extremely interactive channel where it feels like every video that comes out, you had a part in making. So if you have some ideas to make the channel more interactive for you guys, leave them down in the comments. But without wasting any more of your time, let's get into your lore theories that you submitted. The first theory I want to dive into today comes from Bomb M2 and it says, Elden Ring takes place inside the painting painted by the painting woman with the blood of the dark soul from gale in the dark souls 3 dlc now this is one that i've seen quite a few times and it's one that can have a lot of evidence for it but it's one that is also almost impossible to completely disprove because when you look at the way the paintings work in the dark souls universe they seem to have this paracausal power to construct a world of the imagination of the artist now i'm not sure it's clear what defines how big the world is but if we take the idea that the entirety of the lands between is the result of that painting, then it would take a lot more power than what the other two produced. And we can clearly see that the lands between is much larger than Ariamis or Ariandel. And I think we can factor out the idea that the size of the painting would contribute to that, since the painting of Ariamis was very large, and it was the smaller of the worlds that we experienced. But if you really want to have some fun with it, the painting that the girl is working on in Ariandel is being fashioned with a pigment that was created from the blood of the Dark Soul. And I believe it would be safe to assume that that would have a very potent power. Likely one that could create a world as large as the lands between. And if we look at the painting itself, typically these paintings have the most prominent feature as the forefront, but we can see in this that there's no detail created yet. Typically when you make a painting, you want to start with a white base to create a primer for the paint to stick on. So the only thing we need to focus on in this painting is the shape of what she's going to create. Now what it looks to be at first is some kind of castle on a hill structure that we've seen with both Ariamis and Ariandel, but there is something very interesting about this. Take a look at the top. At the very top of the painting, we can see whatever the structure is going to be is having offshoots almost like those of branches. So, theoretically, the most prominent structure in the lands between is the Erd tree, and if she hasn't applied any real color yet, that doesn't rule out this possibility. We could also mention that the outer parts of the painting are red, and we see that red sky in the trailer, so make of that what you will. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Do I buy into it? Not really. But it is an extremely fun theory to play around with and entertain, so thank Thanks for sending that one in. Moving on to the next one. This comes from Wrath of the Gods and it says, Melina is Queen Marika the Eternal. I just have this feeling. Well, you're not the only one that feels that way. I know several other creators have mentioned that before, so let's dive into it. Now, what do we know about Melina? We know she's going to be our Firekeeper character that gives us our spirit horse in the beginning. Now, the game begins with us entering some kind of accord with Melina that we don't yet know the details of. We also know that she has some kind of ulterior motives in the matter that we'll have to decipher in the game. We also know that she has some kind of rot or disease going on in her right eye, and that's about the extent of our knowledge. As for the queen, we know that she is the mother of the demigods, who fought in a war known as the Shattering, and now possess pieces of the Elden Ring known as the Great Runes, which gave them a tainted power. Now aside from their names being excruciatingly similar, what other connections do we have? When we look at the lore of Queen Marika, many of us automatically assume that she has some kind of malevolent hand in the matter, but we don't actually have anything to suggest that. Now we can assume that she was the ruler before the Shattering, since her name, the Eternal, suggests that. So for all we know, she could be on our side in stopping her children. Now what about Melina? Now if you watch my video breaking down the Celtic mythology that Elden Ring is based on, we know that Melina's story and situation is oddly similar to the story of Neve of Tirnanog. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, and I highly recommend you check out that video, but Tirnanog from Celtic mythology and the lands between are almost one-to-one. -one. It's a land of eternal life of the gods that requires someone to 
to cross a sea of fog on a spirit horse, which is exactly how the Tarnished got to the Lands Between. Now, in one legend, a character named Neve offers a man named Oshin a spirit horse, and together they cross the sea of fog into Tirnanog, where there they can enjoy eternal youth. Now, everything in the legend suggests that Neve was already eternal before meeting Oshin. So, if we want to go with Melina's story being directly based on this, then her being eternal isn't far-fetched at all. For all we know, and as the evidence suggests, this could be Queen Marika the Eternal going by the pseudonym Melina and assisting the Tarnished in taking down her children and reforming the Elden Ring for whatever ulterior motives she has. Now, this is probably the most likely one for me to believe. Honestly, we have more evidence suggesting that she is Queen Marika than that she isn't. Now, moving on to the final one I want to talk about today. This comes from Brian Machado and it says, Martin has a lot of mentions of beings of the deep similar to the ones in Lovecraft mythologies. Is it possible that the underground tunnels and the sea that appears in the map relate to them? It would be extremely cool if there was an option to befriend them in a similar way to the Hollows of Londor in Dark Souls 3. But in this case, since it's Celtic mythology, maybe we release the Fomorians in the scene where the sky turns blood red. The dragon with white hair and golden eyes being like a representation of the Erd Tree, trying to keep balance being the final boss. He then says, I think a Shura slash Usurper slash Dark Lord ending would fit Elden Ring in general. So to summarize what he says, his theory is that there are these beings underground that are essentially hostile creatures to the Erd Tree, or the Golden Order of the World, that we the Tarnish can release in this sort of Dark Lord or Shura ending, and find a representative of the Erd Tree as the final boss, which in this case he believes to be the dragon that we fight under the red sky. Now I want to start with these signs of beings of the deep. We do have evidence to suggest that there is something old and ancient hiding underground. These screenshots heavily suggest that there is some kind of race or civilization going on, and to me they don't look too friendly. Now we do know that NPC storylines are going to play a huge role in determining the ending of the game, and I'm positive that there is going to be some sort of dark ending, just as there has been in every other game. So could we side with these beings underground to further cement the dark fate of the lands between? And could this be the reason the sky turns red? We've seen the red sky featured so prominently in the trailers, so to me, I don't think it's going to be necessarily tied to the bad ending. I think it's more likely that it's going to be something that just happens as we progress through the game. Now about the dragon and him being a representative of the Erd Tree, we can kind of see his eyes resembling a golden color, so that would be in line with the theory. But while I think this theory theory is really cool and plausible, we just don't have enough evidence to suggest it being one way or the other. As I said before, I really do think we'll have a dark ending, but right now we just have no idea what it might be. Either way though, thank you for sending in that theory, that's a really cool one. But anyways guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for the video, I hope you enjoyed. I love being able to have this discussion with you and talk about the lore and all that, so we're definitely gonna be doing more of these. And like I said before, I want this channel to become more interactive for you. But anyways, be sure to subscribe if you're not already and leave a like if you didn't yet and I'll catch you in the next one.